This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is not a UFO, but it kind of looks like it. You don't see so many white robotic vacuum cleaners. This one's actually kind of a cult classic. Well, robot rock vacs are. They're not really well known like Roombas are and even the Neato bot vacs that we've reviewed. But for those of you who have found these, largely from Chinese exporters at first, but then, then on eBay and on Amazon, this is a really rocking robot series. And it has things like intelligent mapping and uses LiDAR for room sensing and all that sort of thing. You've got recharge and resume, a lot of other things that folks really like. We're going to look at it now. So the Roborock S6 will sell for $649, but right now their introductory pricing for the United States is $599, $50 off. So at first they're selling it on their eBay store. I'm sure it'll be on Amazon just like the other Roborock models have been. So wider availability is always a good thing. So obviously it's toward the premium end of the robots, not as insanely high as a Roomba S9, but still a little bit cheaper than something like the Neato D7. And for that, you get a lot of sophisticated mapping going on inside and an updated processor. So what you have here is room mapping. You have zone definition. You have no-go lines, which I know a lot of you love. It also works with magnetic strips. None are included in the box, but if you need to go that route for doing it. Scheduling is very flexible. It's pretty neat. You want it to run twice a day in some rooms, you can do that. If you want it to run in high suction in the kitchen, you can do that and then have it run at lower suction in a different room. Very versatile. A lot of tech going on inside of here. And in terms of the mapping, this is some of the best mapping I've ever seen on a robot. It is better than the Neato D7, which seems like it, they really need to update that one because it's a little bit antiquated in some ways. For example, with these LiDAR-based robots, and I'll talk a little bit more about that, if you stop them in the middle of a cycle, sometimes they can feel a little lost as they try to figure out their surroundings, even if you haven't moved them. And if you do move it, you shouldn't move it more than a foot. This one's pretty tolerant. If you just stop it to empty the bin or do whatever because the phone rings, you can do that, and it resumes no problem. If you move it like within a foot, it's not a problem. I've seen the D7 get a little confused for more than a few minutes when you do that sort of thing. So always good to see that. They say it's 50% quieter than the Roborock S5 and slash S50 models, pretty much the same thing there. And it is quiet. It is one of the quietest of the upper range robotic vacuum cleaners. Typically, as you go up in range, you get more suction, so they do get louder. So this is one you can actually run and not, yeah, yeah, you know, just get irritated by the sound. Starting spot cleaning. Now, it does have four suction levels, which is pretty unusual. A lot of ro robotic vacuum cleaners have just one or two suction levels. This one has four. I, it gets to be quiet in part because the low suction level is, well, low suction too. So I usually run it not in the max mode, the turbo mode, but one short of that. And it's still quieter than most higher end robotic vacuum cleaners on the market while doing a good job. Compare it to, say, something like the Roomba i7. And yeah, it's a little bit quieter than even the Roomba i7, which was on the quieter side for a high-end robot vacuum cleaner. It is LiDAR based for its navigation, and that's why it has that little turret up top, because there's a rotating LiDAR laser that helps it do a 2D map of the room. Some people really like LiDAR. Now, the benefit of LiDAR is the fact that it can operate in the dark. So if you want to run it at night, you don't have to go and turn on every light in the house to have it go clean. Awesome, that. I find that the maps that they generate are a little bit less sophisticated. You don't have landmarks, like some of the camera-based VACs, like again, the Roomba S9, can actually see landmarks like furniture and pictures on the wall, so they can figure out where they are really quickly. That's why you don't have this thing about, oh, don't move it more than a foot if you stop it mid-cycle. Also, LiDAR can be fooled by things like sliding glass doors. It can be like a bird and want to fly right into that door, and also floor-length mirrors. Like all of these robots, it has cliff sensors, and they're very good. Insofar as, yes, it has not gone down our stairs by a whoopsie accident, and it also is not fooled by the black borders on our oriental rugs that used to fool older generation robot cleaners. And even sometimes the Roomba 960 and 980 got a little bit cranky about some of the black spots on our very busy oriental rugs. It has carpet boost, which is a feature that I love. Once you've gotten used to that, say with the Roomba 980, I mean, you just don't want to go back. So if you've got area rugs, it will boost when it goes over that. They list it as a beta feature, but it works perfectly well. And if you're running it on wall to wall or something like that, well, it will just boost automatically. I find that that is key in getting your rugs cleaner. 
The dustbin is the same as the last generation. Physically, it's almost identical looking to the last generation robot. So it's about a half a liter. It's not really very big. A lot of robot vacuum cleaners don't have very big dustbins, but it's it's about middle of the road in terms of capacity. It has a HEPA filter and it's a washable filter. That always squeaks me out a little bit. You know, the, these papery looking filters, they say you can wash them, but hey, I actually did wash it and it was fine and it worked well afterwards. It knows if you've taken the dustbin out, most all of these RoboVacs do, and they'll tell you, in fact, you took out the dustbin. And you say, well, duh, thanks, I know, I did do that. I guess if you have kids who want to play around with it or something like that, it lets you know. I, it doesn't have a bin full sensor though. This is a single brush on the bottom. Obviously, this is a round cleaner, not a D-shaped cleaner, so the brush is towards the center between the wheels like older style Roombas are. And a single brush, so you don't get that double beating action. And the bristles on it are very soft, 20% more denser, the folks at Roborock say. And by the way, Roborock is a Xiaomi company. And the bristles are super soft. If you're really worried about your delicate floors, you have nothing to worry about. But that said, they are very soft. They're not really going to churn up stuff on your rug. So if you needed to beat the dog or cat hair off of your rug, a little bit less effective there. You can pop that thing out very easily and you can actually take off the little hub axles on the ends, which is indeed where most human hair tends to wrap up. Not so much pet hair. That gets caught in the bristles just a little bit, but actually not in a lot in the three weeks we've been testing this. But yeah, the axles will get some hair. The spinning brush on this one is kind of cool. And why didn't anybody think of this before? Instead of being bristles, it's kind of like a rubbery silicone-y thing. So those are great because they grip onto dirt and onto hair, and they don't get frayed and damaged as easily. And the only thing is because they do create a little bit more friction, I notice it not turning sometimes on our more plush wall-to-wall -wall -wall rug. But then again, some other RoboVacs also pretty much turn off the side brush when they feel that much resistance. So the suction level on this is the same as the last generation, 2000 PA they claim. It does about 17 CFM on high and 9 on the low setting. How it cleans is obviously very important. And among robots in this price range, it's cleaning in terms of the ability to suck dirt off of the floors and off of area rugs and stuff like that is good. It's not class leading suction in terms of what it pulls off the floors like a Roomba 980 and the S9. And again, the Neato D7, which has really, really strong suction. So it's pretty good. So it depends on your needs. If, if, if intelligent mapping is the most important thing to you and very efficient run times and all that sort of stuff, then obviously it's a great pick. If you have tons of pet hair and dirt and all that sort of thing, then you might still want something that sucks even more, particularly if you have a lot of area rugs or some wall-to-wall -wall carpeting. Don't get me wrong, it does a good job and it's certainly at least as good as a Roomba i7, not known for its classing suction there though, but it's just not the suckiest. Despite the fact that its wheels are not really big, it has no trouble going over doorway thresholds and area rugs, it can vacuum those kind of throw rugs you tend to have in bathrooms that are usually annoying and might get sucked up by some vacuums. It does an excellent job with those. In terms of corner pickup, it's a round robot. You know, D-shaped robots will get the closest to the edge of a wall, but given the fact that it's a round robot, it does pretty well. And also that spinning side brush is not spinning so crazy fast that it flings dirt everywhere, which is a common problem, especially with the less expensive robots, some of the mid-price ones even. So this is a good thing. It doesn't fling it everywhere before it madly tries to eventually pick it up. It cleans in orderly straight lines. It has no problem navigating around furniture legs. You can see it running just perfectly well, going through a maze of table legs and chair legs and all that sort of thing. So absolutely no complaints. In terms of the runtime efficiency, it's actually quite good. Now I timed it cleaning our kitchen and breakfast room. So same mapping set up for both, for all of these robots rather. So it managed to do that area in 17 minutes, whereas the Roomba S9 and the Mito D7 both took 24 minutes. Now they're all set basically to do automatic one pass cleaning. So you can say, aha, how many passes are they doing? So that's set to be equal. So clearly it has a pretty efficient run pattern. The bot has a 5200 milliamp lithium ion battery. That's a very large capacity battery relative to most robots on the market. And in fact, they claim 150 minutes of runtime. And if you run it on echo mode, even in auto mode, you don't have a whole lot of rugs for it to go over. That's about true, you know. But the thing is with recharge and resume, maybe it matters a little bit less to people these days. Now that we have efficient room cleaning and all that sort of thing, it mattered more back in the days when we had dumb robot cleaners that just ping pong off walls endlessly until they hopefully clean the whole room. But still, it's nice to know. 
if you want to get it over and done with, if you have a fairly large floor plan, it should be able to handle it on a single charge. And wait, there's more. <laughs> It does mopping. I am not a big fan of robot vacuum cleaners that also mop, but there it is. So they've redesigned it. It's got a little water tank that you slide onto the robot and you can either use, they give you two reusable, nice mop cleany thingies, and they give you 10 disposable ones as well. You can only put water in, you're not supposed to put any cleaners and all that sort of thing, and you're supposed to pre-moisten the pad first. And it only cleans about as well as a Swiffer. How does that actually work? You, you Once you put that that cleaning mopping module in, it knows that it's in mopping mode, so it's ready to go there. So you don't have to worry about it vacuuming and mopping at the same time and making just a god awful mess of things. But the drawback is, and why I'm not a fan, other than the fact that it's not really much more effective than a little light swiffering, is the fact that rugs, area rugs, throw rugs, that sort of thing, you kind of have to pick them up. It's not like a purpose built mopping machine like a BravaJet or something that knows whenever it meets anything that requires to go up a little bit it just won't even do it so that's how it avoids rugs this one does not avoid rugs so you've got to pick up your rugs first ah but inquiring minds say so what happens when my robot comes back to the dock with its soggy diaper on and i'm not home well here it is folks this clips onto the docking station so that your floor is protected from the moist pad that is attached to the bottom of the mopping robot. So one of the coolest things about the map is it actually shows you where the robot is on the map. Now a lot of these other high-end mapping robots, they could do the same thing and I don't know why they don't. So it's kind of cool, Not number one, in case it gets stuck, not that this one does get stuck very often, and just to see how the progress is going with it. Uh, what I'm not as excited about, it's about up there with the Neatobot Vac D7 in terms of the maps and the way you can mark them up. There's no rotation. We have an open floor plan where it seems like there's just no right angles, you know? So being able to rotate the rectangle would be really handy to cover some of the room definitions. And you can't put labels on them. So sometimes it's like a little bit of a spatial IQ test. When I look at it again, I go, this room is which one on the map? Yeah, and so iRobot does it better with the Roomba i7 and the S9. You actually get a very orderly looking map and you can label the room so that you don't have a little brain whoopsie later on and send it to the wrong room. So that's the Roborock S6 available now. If you have a Roborock S5 or S50, I'm probably not a huge motivation to upgrade, which is probably a nice thing for your wallet. But for those of you who are trying to pick a, a higher end robot vacuum cleaner that's not insanely expensive, like the high end Roomba models are, for example, this one is a great alternative. I mean, the mapping on this is just A1. It's really very good. It doesn't smack things too hard. It's got excellent battery life. Granted, with recharge and resume, that doesn't matter quite as much but a lot of good stuff here it's not the most powerful section on the market but it's up there pretty well given its price range i think it's perfectly acceptable unless you have a lot of dogs and a lot of cats and all that sort of thing then you still might want to look at something like that the neato bot back d7 or the very expensive roomba s9 i'm lisa from mobile tech review be sure to subscribe to our youtube channel for more cool tech videos including robot backs and thumbs up if you like this vid